Welcome to In Focus. It's no secret that pornography is a big issue in this generation. And we thought that it was important for us to delve a little deeper into understanding how to get our hands around this issue. Porn Hub reported these figures for 2016 that there were 64 million websites visited daily worldwide and 91 billion porn videos viewed. Now I want you to get this. 4.5 billion hours of porn is being watched. In order to help us understand the difference of not only the industry but also the education, we have with us Julia Beasley, who is the Director of Public Policy for the EFC. And uh, we've spoken before, but we needed to go a little bit deeper. So thank you for being here, Julia. My pleasure. You know, when, when we hear those numbers, uh, uh, 64 million websites visited uh, worldwide and 91 billion uh, videos. We're seeing that this is um, an epidemic mm -hmm. in, in this generation. It's been said that this is the first generation that has not known purity mm -hmm. because it is piped in in so many areas. Uh, last time we spoke, we were listening to uh, some of the things that were coming out of Ottawa, specifically with a committee that was speaking on how uh, children should be educated. Now, when we talk about the brain and young people mm -hmm. getting into the issue, why is this such a big issue? Because this is an area that you've studied uh, in depth on. Well, first we need to understand that pornography is absolutely ubiquitous. It is everywhere. It's actually harder to avoid today than it is, or it's hard to avoid than it is to come across. Mm. And this is impacting our children in a significant way. We know from a variety of sources that the average age of first exposure is between 10 and 12 years of age. Now that's an average. That means that many kids are exposed much younger. And with the internet, um, it's particularly harmful because we have to understand that when we watch pornography, it activates the reward center of our brain. Mm. This is the engine in our brain whose purpose it is to drive us to do things that ensure our survival or that feel good. And dopamine is the chemical that fuels that engine. Mm -hmm. So when we watch pornography, it unleashes this flood of dopamine into our systems yes. and it physically changes the wiring in our brains. Mm -hmm. So the human brain matures from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. So the reward center is fully developed in young teens and children. But the part of the brain up here, it's called the executive control center, it doesn't develop until we're into our early to mid 20s. Yes. So the teenage brain is all gas pedal, no brakes. Yeah. So they are particularly vulnerable to the impacts of pornography. It is in a physiological way shaping their attitudes, their behaviors, their preferences. Yeah. And this for teenagers in particular, um, creates a risk of compulsive behavior and addiction. Now, you know, this is this is very Im Im important because you're talking about the back of the brain, the amygdala, and the prefrontal cortex, the front of the brain. Mm -hmm. So those are your learning centers, and you're talking about dopamine, which are the feel-good transmitters. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about addiction. Yeah, it's the same chemical that's released if we do drugs or, you know, eat a chocolate cake. or <laughs> You know, it's, it's the pleasure chemical. So we need to reframe this and understand that this is a drug that's here our children mm -hmm. uh, just as much as we would see uh, substance abuse in other areas yes. now when we talk about addiction this is not just something that's outside the church but it's also inside the church as well yeah. how do we prepare ourselves and and even begin as to get a, a clear focus on how to combat this so I think we need to take the lid off we know that this is a problem inside the church as well um, addiction is a problem inside the church and people are so afraid to talk about it. We have made this something that is such a shameful thing to talk about. We need to, we need to take the lid off and let people have um, that feeling that they can come clean, yes. that they can talk about their struggles. Um, we need to be talking in our churches with our kids in our families and we need to start really young. You know, most of us over the age of 30 probably made it into adulthood just fine without having these awkward kinds of conversations with our parents, but that's not a reality anymore. We have to get ahead of this. We have to be the ones who are talking to them, answering the questions they have, giving them the information they're looking for so that they don't go to the internet. It's where we go for our answers, right? Sure. So we want them to get their answers at home. And you're a mom as well, and not only involved in public policy, but when you're talking about shaping attitudes and behaviors and preferences right now, because part of the 
M47 was to now open up and make it accessible so kids can also learn alternative lifestyles. How do we now begin to combat that and become proactive in engaging ourselves, not only in the teaching of that, but also understanding a greater under, uh, how to engage the, uh, the political system, like our MPs? Again, I would say our best, uh, our best defense, first and foremost, is to be the place our kids come with their questions. So whatever they're hearing at school, whatever they're seeing, wherever else, if we don't give them the answers they're looking for, everything else and everyone else is going to tell them. So we have to be the ones to have those conversations with them, ha have that foundation laid so that no matter what else they hear, they have that starting place. And like I said, continue to make your concerns know to your member of parliament. Let them know we think this is an issue. We want them to take action to protect our children. Um, yeah, we have to make our voices heard on this. You know, that is a, an important point to, to stop on. This issue is not over, but we need to exhaust that. And from a pastor's point of view, I want to challenge you also to now re-engage the dialogue. Um, you can call the number on the screen. We could help you here at the 700 Club Canada if you need further uh, resources to go into. But it's important that you let your voice be heard and let us not sit back at this critical time. We'll be right back after this.